Thoroughbred Action is presented by Hardacre Farm. Welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. I'm Ron Nicoletti. What a day. It is a special day here. It is the Pegasus World Cup Invitational Day. 12 races on tap. Let's get right to those track and weather conditions. The main track pass, turf course firm, the first race seven furlongs. It's an allowance optional claim of for four-year-olds and upward. Jockey change on the three, make the rider Javier Castellano scratch number eight, billion star. Racing at Gulfstream. From the outside, Day of Fury wins the start and goes looking for the lead in the center. Here's Visionary Ruler moving up, and Visionary Ruler puts a head in front of Day of Fury out of the chute. Ekatiro is now third from Homespun Hero in fourth. Back fifth is Louis Baby Boy. Then comes Fast Fryer from between horses, goes Bulldozer with looking for a kiss down toward the inside. It's a length and a half to the team at the back. They include Wave Warrior and Juan and Bina. The opening quarter was 23 seconds flat. Visionary Ruler and Edgar Zayas a half a length in front. Ekatiro is there second on the outside day of fury is now third homespun hero is in fourth at the half mile pole in front of louis baby boy fast fryer salt starts an assault four wide under joe bravo two lengths back to looking for a kiss then bulldozer out three wide is wave warrior and trailing the field is juan and bina that's the 10 of them as they round the far turn with less than five sixteenths to go ikatiro just took over the lead fast fryers into second trying to run on his homespun hero and louis baby boy looking for a kiss is coming off the fence to try to rally home and Bulldozer swings to the center of the course. Into the stretch they come. Ikatiro set down for the drive. Homespun Hero tries to get to him with a rail run second. Then Louis Baby Boy and looking for a kiss. Inside the final furlong. Ikatiro with the lead. Off the fence. Homespun Hero will try him one more time. Down the center and looking for a kiss. They come to the wire. Ikatiro. Homespun Hero. It's Ikatiro. Ikatiro and Paco Lopez hold firm to win it from Homespun Hero. Then looking for a kiss in 123 and 4. Nice ride by number six, Ika Tira to win it for My Purple Hay Stables LLC, trained by Terry Pompey, and ridden to victory today by Paco Lopez. Race number two, one mile and one sixteenth on the turf. It's an allowance optional claimer. Phillies three-year-olds, eight in field, no scratches or jockey changes to report. And they're off. Last in, first out, Bonita Springs gets the first call down toward the inside. Sweeping Patty is showing speed. And from between horses, Chubby Star now moves through. Chubby Star and Sweeping Patty go on in the run to the first turn. Grateful now takes over third with a rail run, followed by Bonita Strings. Then comes Alandis. At the rail, it's Dancing Waves. Dream Dancing is second last. And at the back of the pack, the trailer is Bitacora. They're around the first turn, and up top, the leader now, Chubby Star, by almost two. Sweeping Patty second, Grateful third. From fourth, it's Bonita Springs, then comes Alandis. Dancing Waves is down toward the inside. A length better than Dream Dancing. Well spotted in the early stages by Leparu, racing about six and a half lengths off the lead, and three in front of Bitacora, who's last of all, through a 22-3 and three aggressive opening quarter. Down the back stretch they go with Chubby Star and Jose Ortiz, on top by two and a half. Sweeping Patty starts to inch closer second. At the rail, Grateful is third. Racing from fourth is Bonita Springs, followed inside by Dancing Waves. Out wide is Alandis. Dream Dancing is continuing to progress while only racing five and a half lengths off the lead now. And Bitacor is asked to quicken at the back of the pack as they round the far turn. Chubby Star has been in front from the outset through a 46 and three opening half mile. Still leads by two and a half. From second, it's Grateful. From third, Sweeping Patty. Kickstarting a rally four wide. Here's the move from Dream Dancing. Dream Dancing comes around under Leparu, drawing closer with only two and a half lengths to make up after three quarters and 111 flat. Dream Dancing sweeping up on the outside. Grateful in between horses and at the rail coming on next is Chubby Star followed by Dancing Ways but Dream Dancing kicking clear with authority. It's Dream Dancing and Julian Leparu to kick off the early pick four with a two length win. Chubby Star fought on well to get second ahead of Grateful third then Dancing Waves and Bonita Springs to complete the high five in 140 and one. Number six, Dream Dancing closes to win it for owner John Oxley, trained by Mark Cassie. Written the victory today by Julian Leparou.
The third race, seven furlongs. It's the 20th running of the Hurricane Birdie. Grade three event, $100,000 guaranteed for Phillies and Mares, four-year-olds, and up to scratch the four, Sugar Cone. And they're off in the Hurricane Birdie. Genre was a step slow. From the outside, Bodacious Babe wins the break. Linda Linda right with her. So is Improv. And Distinta makes it a party as she makes it four across and they run out of the chute. Curlin's approval is now fifth from Genre. And the early trailer is the stretch runner, Ia Botter. Down the back stretch they go. And what was four is now three. Up top, it's Bodacious Babe, Improv. And on the outside, Linda Linda. They're stride for stride. Backing off the speed, fourth was Distinta. Then Curlin's approval. Well spotted by Luis Saez. Fifth is the favorite and only two lengths behind. Genre has been taken off the fence to make a three wide move and you bought her closer at the back she'll try to ride the rail into contention the entire field separated by two and a half lengths and the run around the far turn the opening quarter was just 23 seconds flat less than three furlongs to go bodacious babe has the lead moving on now here's the favorite curlin's approval in between horses distinta you bought her had to tap on the brake genres wide on the course through a 45 six and two opening half mile they run past the quarter pole curlin's approval up to confront bodacious babe distinta continues to away at the top pair from fourth in genre from fifth you bought her into the stretch and up top curlin's approval takes a narrow lead bodacious bay battles on second distant to next down the center you bought her with a late say inside the final 16th and curlin's approval starts to edge away it will be the favorite curlin's approval and Luis saez to win it by two genre gets second distant was third close for fourth between bodacious babe and you bought her in 123 and one Number three, Curlin's Approval. What a nice performance pace. $3.60. Owned by Altis Racing Stable Incorporated. Trained by Marty Wolfson. And a real nice ride by Jackie Luis Saez. The fourth race, one mile and one eighth on the turf. It's a maiden event for Thrillies, three year olds. Full field of 13 runners going to the post. The off time favorite, number two, Ritzy Rose. And they're off. From the center, Bogolator gets the first call. From the far outside, Jaunt is trying to get over. Away racing third is Ritzy Rose. Then from between horses, it's Empress of the Nile. Out wide on the course goes Sympathetic with Union Way between horses. Decant is taken back, and Proctor's Ledge has rail position. A length better than the team of Dramatic Girl and Court of Love. Court of Love spotted about six lengths behind. Racing down to her inside and racing third last is Star Maven. BRB is second last, and the first-timer Schlee is last of all as they race around the first turn. Turn. Stacked and packed up front with Ritzy Rose at half length in front of Bogolator in second. Up on the outside, that's Jaunt third at the rail Proctor's Ledge fourth. Moving up on the far outside is Sympathetic. Bit wide through that first turn, only a half length off the lead though, while making it four across the track. Empress of the Nile held up between horses. Then it's Decant. Union Way is next with Dramatic Girl at the rail. Followed a length behind by the team of BRB and Court of Love. Then it's another length and a half back to Star Maven, and Schlee is still last. The entire field separated by eight lengths in the run to the far turn. They went an opening quarter in 24 flat. They went a half mile in 48 and four. So they took a breather in the second quarter and Ritzy Rose and John Velasquez continue to lead. To the attack, three wide is Jaunt. In between horses, it's Bogolator. Proctor's Ledge awaits racing room. So does Empress of the Nile. Dramatic is now three wide. Then it's a length back to Court of Love. Trying to run on from the back is Dramatic Girl. She's got no place to go. Union Way will circle wide on the course. Still many chances as they turn for home. Bogolator from between horses set down for the drive by Paco Lopez. Proctor's Ledge ducks to the inside and down the center. Empress of the Nile is coming on. Eighth of a mile to go. Bogolator has the lead. Proctor's Ledge now starts to make ground second and Empress of the Nile on the outside. Here's Proctor's Ledge and Corey Lannery. Proctor's Ledge in time. Second was Bogolator. Third was Empress of the Nile. Close after that, led by Court of Love, then Union Way and Dramatic Girl in 148 and four. Bombs away. Number one, Proctor's Ledge gets up to win it and pays $100 to win. Owned by Patricia Mosley, trained by Brendan Walsh, and a beautiful ride by jockey Corey Lannery. The fifth race, one mile and one eighth. It is the first running of the Poseidon $400,000 guaranteed. The off-time favorite, number four, Stanford. And they're off in the Poseidon Handicap. 
Luis Colon is offensive-minded with Ranger in Paradise from an inside gate. He's heading off for the early lead. Stanford is moving between horses and High Riverside. Comes away a bit wide as the leader floats out the second and third runners and the run around the first turn. From fourth, it's Imperative. Then fifth, My Loot. Then Papa Zulu sixth. Fearless Dragon is at the rail seventh with Made from Lucky. And three wide at the back. The trailer is Cherry Wine. Around the first turn they go, chasing long shot hopeful Ranger in Paradise, who leads it by two. Stanford is taken back second. High Riverside's on his outside third. Back fourth is Imperative, about four and a half lengths off the lead. Then comes My Loot, moving up on the inside Fearless Dragon. Made from Lucky, stuck four wide down the backstretch. Papa Zulu between horses, and Cherry Wine unhurried under Corey Lannery. Last of all through the opening quarter in 23 and four. Down the backstretch they go in the Poseidon Handicap, and up top, the leader is still Ranger in Paradise. Stanford in a precarious spot. He's down toward the inside, a joint second alongside High Riverside. And Stanford has to move through and do it right now. And he does just that as they run to the far turn. Stanford now the leader. Racing from second, that's the High Riverside four wide and on the outside. Imperative launching an attack. And he's moving right now for jockey Antonio Gallardo as they round the far turn. Here's the move from on the outside. Imperative to take on Stanford. High Riverside boxes on between horses. Made from Lucky. Now races from fourth. Down inside fifth is Papa Zulu. Then Cherry Wine backing up Ranger in Paradise. Fearless Dragon and My Loot at the back as they turn for home. Big time tussle on the top end. Stanford set down for the drive and trying to hold firm to the attack. Imperative won't go away. These two shoulder to shoulder with an eighth of a mile to go. It's Stanford on the inside. It's Imperative on the outside. A thrilling stretch run in the inaugural Poseidon. Stanford reaching. Imperative surging. It's going to be close. It's too close to call. How's that for the first Poseidon in 148 and four? What a finish. Number three, Imperative gets the close photo over the four Stanford and pays $16.40 to win. Owned by Luch Racing Stables and Imaginary Stables, trained by Bob Hess and ridden to victory today by Antonio Gallardo. The sixth race, one mile and one eighth on the turf. These are maiden three-year-olds, scratch the 14 data room and the 15 spelling B King. And they're up. Good start for Don't Overlook, a good start for Just Howard and Slimy from down toward the inside. Confiscate at the rail has speed as they run to the finish line the first time. It's Don't Overlook and Confiscate, the top pair, racing third and fourth or high above and Slimy. Then it's a length back to Zorzo who ducks over from the 12 post ahead of Just Howard. He's mid-flight and five lengths off the lead. He's working a length better than American Deluxe who's in the two path. Invasor's win down to his inside. Followed by Snap Decision, then Mascarpone. Second last early is Appealing Briefs and the early trail unspoiled moments. Around the first turn they go through the opening quarter in a quick 23 and one. And up front, it's 35 to one proposition. Don't overlook who now leads by a length. Confiscate is second. Moving up on the outside, taking over second is high above. Slimy between horses. Then it's a length and a half back to Zorzor. Fifth and four lengths off the lead. Just Howard rides the rail for Trevor McCarthy, racing about five lengths off the lead. Four lengths clear of American Deluxe. Then comes Snap Decision in the Phipps colors. He's better than 10 lengths off the lead. He's a length better than Mosh Capone out of last place is unspoiled moments appealing briefs is second last and invasors win now drops to trail through a 48 second half mile around the far turn they go don't overlook as the lead but confiscate is back for more second working hard three wide third is high above back fourth is slimy then just howard and zorzor stretch of three and a half lengths trying to rally from the back is american deluxe then snap decision as they run to the top of the stretch meanwhile up front don't overlook has something in reserve and he re-breaks a bit zorzor into the clear snap Snap Decision cut the corner. He'll need to find the way through, and he just did. Here's Snap Decision surging to a short lead. And jockey Jose Ortiz made a Snap Decision, and a good decision it was, was as he's on his way to victory. Give it to Snap Decision by two and a half. Just Howard second. Don't overlook third. Close for fourth. Appealing briefs or Zorzor -Zor in 147 flat. Number 13, Snap Decision wins it for fifth stable. Trained by Shug McGay and ridden to victory today by Jose Ortiz. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have the 12th running of the ladies' turf sprint.
passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded in 1999 by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, now based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm, from the breeding shed to the racetrack, in pursuit of producing the best. Welcome back, the seventh race, five furlongs on the turf. It is the 12th running of the Ladies Turf Sprint, $125,000 guaranteed. Phillies and mares, four-year-olds and up. Scratch the three, Ruby Notion, the five, Artesian, and number six, Brandy's Girl. And they're off in the Ladies Turf Sprint. From the far outside, everything lovely, centaured by Javier Castellano. She's going to try to get the lead and cross over doing it with my sister Carol away racing in second. In between horses goes Blue Bahia. Night Delight is now fourth and having to tap on the brakes ever so slightly under Paco Lopez as everything lovely is going to work clear. It's a stretch of three lengths to Spectacular Me in pretty perfection. A length in front of Triple Chelsea, who's wide and seven lengths off the lead. And the two at the back are Bibby and Moon River. Around the far turn they go from the 12 post. Everything lovely has the lead. Night Delight now on the attack from second three lengths back to pretty perfection third then spectacular me triple Chelsea and down inside blue Bahia they straighten for the drive everything lovely set down for the drive by Javier Castellano and trying to finish the job to the attack here's pretty perfection with a rush also coming on latest triple Chelsea inside the final furlong and pretty perfection and Nick Juarez surging to the lead pretty perfection to win it very close for second triple Chelsea gets the ultimate bob over everything lovely in 50 Five and one. Number eight, Pretty Perfection was pretty nice, winning in a very nice performance owned by Stoneway Farm LLC, trained by Kelly Breen, ridden to victory today by Nick Juarez. The eighth race, seven furlong maiden event for three rolls, a full field of 14 runners will go to the post. And they're off. Slow to begin was Blind Ambition. Quick to begin was Jamologister. Truly a moonshot is sent hard from the inside. Truly a moonshot and Paco Lopez want the lead as they run out of the chute. Away racing in third is Conquest Bandit. Then to his outside and moving closer, looking for eight. He'll be four wide down the backstretch run. Outside of him is Flying to Honor, trying to keep up while being asked to do so. It's a length back at the rail to Vorsavento. Into Belief moves up on the outside, recovering his blind ambition after a sluggish getaway. Commandeering and Bluegrass Envy also in that flight. Tapping on the brakes was Conquest Bandit, he shuffled himself back. It's a stretch of four to Lunaire, who works two lengths better than Eastport, and it's another three lengths to the two at the back. They are run for the cup and no dinero. Around the far turn through the opening quarter in 22 and three, and it's Jamologister at a huge number in front by a head. Truly a moonshot battles on second. Here's looking for eight, who's looking for a win. Three wide and on the attack while confidently handled. Borsa Vento will be the stretch danger for Nick Juarez. He's winding him up while working into the clear as they turn for home. Home, looking for eight, set down for the drive and opens a two-length lead. Borsa Vento shifting ground, trying to get on track second. Late run down the center from Eastport, but inside the final furlong, looking for eight is long gone. Looking for eight and jockey Julian Leparu makes his second start a winning one and wins it with style by three lengths. Borsa Vento second, Eastport third, well clear of Blind Ambition, who was fourth, and fifth was commandeering in 123 and three. Number eight, looking for eight, wins the eighth race and gives jockey Julian Leparu his second win today, owned by E. Irvin Wolseley and Ralph Kinder and trained by Mike Tomlinson. The ninth race, this is the 12th running of the Gulfstream Park Turf Sprint, $125,000 guaranteed, five furlongs for four-year-olds and upward. And they're off in the Gulfstream Park Turf Sprint. From the center, Dr. J-Dub begins nicely out wide, power alert showing speed. Here's the favorite Manhattan Dan moving closer and Platinum Prince is away in the top flight. Also coming on to put ahead in front is Pay Any Price. They're lining up for the lead. Pay Any Price ahead in front, Dr. J-Dub right back at him. Manhattan Dan just flat out paced to the opening quarter. He's racing back in fifth, power alert just took fourth. Back in sixth position is Mongolian Saturday, then El Deal. Incensed is next with Rainbow Air at the rail. Divine Warrior third last, second last long on value and Super Spender 
Wonder will have to pass them all with a quarter of a mile to go. Pay any price in Luis Castillo trying to spring the upset. Here's the veteran power alert. The gray set down for the drive second. Back third is Dr. J. Dub. Manhattan Dan did not go on. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Pay any price is digging in. Power alert is surging. Super spender from last. Rainbow Air is coming on. Long on values motoring. He's out of time, but here's Rainbow Air. Rainbow Air makes it very close on the wire. Too close to call, in fact, between Power Alert and Rainbow Air in 54 and four. Number 11, Power Alert gets the close photo. Boy, was that close and gives jockey Julian Leperu his third win on the card. Owned by AJ Suited Racing Stables, LLC and Brian Lynch and trained by Brian Lynch. The 10th race, the 48th running of the Grade 3 La Provient, $200,000 guaranteed one mile and one half. Phillies and mares, four-year-olds and up. They're off in the La Provient. Good start inside for Gypsy Eyes, and she's heading off to take the early lead from Quiet Kitten, who comes away racing in second. Try Your Luck is between horses, a bit keen and trying to move forward. Arl's on her outside and joining the top flight. Desiree Clary tugs between horses. Then out wide is Suffuse. She's four wide around the first of three turns. Flip Cup held up between horses. Whoppy three wide. Stay the night at the rail. Stretch of two to promotional third last. Second last is Lobelia, and Paige is reined back at the back under Paco Lopez, trailing the field about 13 lengths off the lead of Gypsy Eyes. Into the stretch for the first time, and Gypsy Eyes makes the pace. She leads now by a length. Try her luck in the two-path second. Quiet Kitten is third. Arl takes a trail behind the speed while fourth ahead of Desiree Clary. Then comes Suffused and Stay the Night. Wappy is three wide under the wire the first time. In between horses is Flip Cup, working two better than promotional. She's situated about eight lengths off the lead for Jose Lescano. She's five in front of Lobelia, who's three clear of Page, who lags behind last through a 48-4 and four opening half mile after a 24 and 4 opening quarter mile pace is solid enough as they round the first turn and up top the leader gypsy eyes by a length from the outside try your luck second quiet kittens had the best seat in the house third behind the speed arl has also had a good run of it she's fourth racing two and a half lengths off the lead and a length better than desiree clary then to the outside it's suffuse jose ortiz has her four lengths behind at the rail goes stay the night in between them is flip cup out three wide and the outside is whoppy then comes her barn buddy promotional four clear of an improving page and Lobelia is now last. They move to the half mile pole in the La Provayant after three quarters in 113 and four. The leader is still Gypsy Eyes going to the mile mark a half in front through the opening mile in 138 and three. Try Your Luck is second. Quiet Kitten at the inside third. Arl is now fourth. Desiree Clary travels from fifth and now here's Suffused. She's racing into sixth and three lengths off the lead. Wappy called on but not making much of a run then stay the night and flip cup. Page tries to rally from last. Promotional needs some place to go and Lobelia tries to play catch up as the back as they run to the top of the stretch. It's Try Your Luck who takes over the lead. Here's Suffused and the Juttmott Pink on the outside. Suffused four wide and on the attack. In between horses is Quiet Kitten and Arl is still right there. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Suffused has the lead. Arl tries to stay with her second. Back third, Try Your Luck, then Quiet Kitten, but they come to the finish and the La Proviant goes to Suffused. Suffused by a length in the end from Arl second in 226 flat. Number 12, Suffuse, proves much the best and really nice performance owned by Judd Mott Farms Incorporated, trained by Bill Mott, and that gives Jockey Jose Ortiz his second victory today. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll have the 50th running of the W.L. McKnight. Welcome back to the 11th race, one mile and one half, four-year-olds and upward. It is the 50th running of the W.L. McKnight, a grade three event, $200,000 guaranteed. And they're off in the W.L. McKnight. 
The veteran Twilight Eclipse gets the first call. Down at the inside, here's Diamond Bachelor up the challenge. And Diamond Bachelor puts ahead in front of Twilight Eclipse with Patterson Cross away racing third while three wide. Then down toward the inside, it's Montclair. Racing to his outside is Danish Dynaformer. Out three wide, Charming Kitten. Applicator is off the speed today. Tug Lieb is down toward the rail. Followed by Sadler's Joy. Then it's the big gray Mr. Maybe who works three clear of Generous Kitten and the early trailer, Hunter O'Reilly. They round the far turn for the first time, and up top, the leader, Diamond Bachelor, by a length. On the outside, and Patterson cross from second, Twilight Eclipse is now third. Charming Kitten is on hold while racing fourth, and Montclair from down toward the inside. Danish Dynaformers is on his outside. Applicator, three wide into the stretch the first time, covered up is Taglieb. He's a length better than the gray Mr. Maybe, who had to tap on the brakes slightly there. To his outside is Sadler's Joy, working two better than Generous Kitten, and 12th and last is Hunter O'Reilly with one lap to go. The open Opening quarter was 24 and 3. They went a half mile in 49 and 1. And they run into the clubhouse turn, and the leader is still Diamond Bachelor by a length. Patterson Cross is second. Twilight Eclipse has had a very good run of it. He's down toward the inside third, drafting behind the leader. From fourth, it's Charming Kitten. He's also well spotted, only three lengths behind, and two and a half clear of Danish Dynaformer and Montclair. Then comes long shot applicator with Taglieb to his inside. It's a length back to Sadler's Joy. The gray, Mr. Maybe, is still third last. He's two better than second last running generous. Kitten and Hunter O'Reilly is 12th and last as they run down the Gulfstream backstretch. They went through three quarters in 113 and 1, and they go to the half mile mark of the race. And up top, Diamond Bachelor, he's been in front from the outset, and he leads it by a length and a half. Patterson Cross second, Twilight Eclipse has lost a bit of ground. He's now racing a joint third with Charming Kitten on his outside. Then Danish Steinformer, Montclair is down toward the rail. He'll need a way through. He's the length better than an improving Mr. Maybe, who's to the inside of Moth Taglieb. Three wide applicator at the back, Sadler's Joy Trial to run on. Hunter O'Reilly is out of last, and now the trailer is Generous Kitten, and now the pace quickens. They run to the top of the stretch in the McKnight, and they line up. Patterson Cross is up to take a short lead. Charming Kitten and Tug Lieb is off cover. Danish Dynaformer down the center, and Sadler's Joy's looking for room with an eighth of a mile to go. Tug Lieb has the lead. Sadler's Joy set down, driving by Leparu, trying to get him on the money. It's Tug Lieb or Sadler's Joy. Here's the wire photo finish. Maybe Tug Lieb inside, guys, from the outside Sadler's Joy charging hard in 225 and four. Number one, Taglieb closes to win it for owner Michael Hoy, trained by Mike Maker and ridden to victory today by our local jock, Tyler Gaffleon. The 12th and final race, it is the first running of the Pegasus World Cup Invitational, a grade one. $12 million, scratch 13, 14, and 15. They're off in the Pegasus World Cup. Arrogate was away well, and so was California Chrome, but Noble Bird wins the start, and he'll go looking for the lead. California Chrome trying to get over, but he stuck about six wide into the first turn run. Meanwhile, Mike Smith has Arrogate down toward the inside, and a joint second while on hold. Neolithic is on his outside. Now, California Chrome settles in fourth while racing three wide, followed fifth by War Story. Then it's a gap of two to Breaking Lucky. Shaman goes between horses. War Envoy down toward the inside. He's a neck better than Semper Fortis. Then it's a stretch of three to Keen Ice. He's two and a half clear of the veteran prayer for relief, and the Argentine Aragon settles in 12th and last through the opening quarter in 23 and 2. Down the back stretch they go. Julian Leparu and Noble Bird, offensive-minded. They lead it by a length from the outside and Neolithic from second. Then it's the heavy hitters. They're stride for stride already. Arrogate on the inside. California Chrome on the outside. Third and fourth, and only two lengths behind the pace setters. Racing from fifth, it's the long shot. War Story, a stretch of two and a half. Shaman Ghost is next with War Envoy to his inside, followed by Semper Fortis and Breaking Lucky. Then Keen Ice. It's a stretch of five to Prayer for Relief and five more to Aragon, who's last as they round the far turn. 46 seconds for the opening half mile, and Mike Smith is the first to move as Arrogate moves up to take the lead. Back to second is Neolithic. Back to third is Noble Bird. California Chrome is losing ground. California Chrome not gaining. He's back wide and racing in fifth. Shaman goes splits horses for Jose Ortiz, and they're into the stretch, and it's the Breeders' Cup winner. It's Arrogate in front, leading by three with an eighth of a mile to go. Shaman Ghost is trying to get into second. Then Neil
Paleolithic. Back fourth is Noble Bird, followed by Keen Ice. But what a race! What a sport! What a horse! Arrogate romps in the Pegasus. He won it by three and a half while confidently handled. Shaman goes second. Neolithic third. Then Keen Ice, War Story, and Noble Bird in one, 47 and three. Wow, Arrogate, much the best, just cruises to victory for Judd Mudd Farms Incorporated, trained by Bob Baffert and ridden to victory today by Mike Smith. In the pick five, five of five, paid $342.60, four of five, $7.35. Rainbow six, numerous tickets, six of six, $3,145.34 to carry over going into Sunday's 12 race card. $306,709.84. And that wraps up Saturday's card. Remember to join us on Sunday. It is Ultra Fan Appreciation Day. Dollar beers, dollar hot dogs. Boy, you got to be at Gulfstream Park. Good night and good luck. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Hit the hay. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. Well, I'm tired. Let me tell you, Jack, I'm so tired.